So guys, this is Joe, CEO of Shaper. Joe, thanks for having us here. Absolutely. What did I just do? Uh, I don't know, you just became a, a, a master craftsman, apparently. It was just, so just within minutes. easy. Um, so Shaper, the Shaper Origin, this is the tool you guys have been making, developing for a while now. And uh, would it be fair to call this a CNC router? It would be. We consider it the first handheld CNC router. Tell me about the story of the Shaper Origin. I've seen, the, when I think CNC router, I think things are either self-contained or things that have, or are on rails. Right, um, or really big. Or really big. Right. Uh, what's the advantage of something that's CNC and also handheld? Right. Well, several advantages. One is portability. So you're not kind of restricted to the shop space that you're working in. You can actually bring the tool to the material or to a job site instead of bringing material to the shop. Other big advantages is overall kind of, you know, cost and complexity. So uh, instead of thinking about a big gantry based machine for doing, you know, very large projects. So for example, we work in um, a variety of scale, huge projects like this workbench, all the way down to little tiny projects like, you know, any of these things you see here. So being able to run that range and at the end of the day, just put this thing into a little box and put it on the shelf at the end of the day provides a lot of flexibility. And, and at a low cost. The fundamental feature that got me excited and that I was able to show here is the computer, computer aided aspect of this, the CNC part of it. I'm holding this router and as I'm literally tracing a, a, a design, a vector on the screen, um, there are two axes of stabilization. Correct. Yeah, so we use, we use computer vision to understand where the tool is relative to the workpiece at any given time. And we use real time motor control to course correct along the way to keep your cuts clean on that vector file that you were talking about. That was, there's a lot that you just said went on there. <laughs> Things that I never would associate with the CNC world. Uh, let's start with computer vision. That's sure. like the kind of like almost the secret sauce behind this. It is. Uh, what's step one to get this working? I see a lot of these look like they're fiducial markers, but almost look like dominoes. Correct. Yeah, we've developed a, uh, a fiducial marker system. It's a tape. It's a it's a low cost, it's a disposable tape, it just comes off on a reel like this, and it's pretty easy. You just slap it down. It doesn't really matter what the orientation is, it doesn't need to be parallel. The only thing that's important is, the, is that the, the image sensor, the camera, can see some number of those markers at any given time. If it sees those markers, it knows where it's at, and it knows where it needs to be relative to where it thinks it needs to be. That's yeah, there's a camera here, it's looking at this, this workbench area, right. and then at the end of that process, it knows it knows the space. The Correct. Space. Yeah. So we, when we scan in, the computer cares about seeing these markers. That's how it knows where it is. It's it's sort of tool. You can think of it like tool GPS. Mm -hmm. But we also get a lot of other information that's that's relevant and important to us as humans, as makers, as builders. Which is, you know, with the same image sensor, we can pick up a lot of information like wood grain, edges of the wood. Uh, or, or you know whatever material work you're working on, and then when you go to place your your vector file, your digital file on there, you can actually use that information. Mm. So you put it to the vector file, and like these are any files that you can load in from CAD software. Yeah, correct. So we we don't have we don't make our own CAD software. We're sort of CAD agnostic or file agnostic. We're uh, the goal is to be able to, to load in any vector file. Right now we use SVGs, and uh, we've got a few different ways that you can get the file to the tool. So if you're creating files yourself, uh, if you're you know, familiar with tools like Illustrator, or, you know, what it, your tool of choice, you can actually drop them into a folder on your desktop, and it will, it's, it will sync with the tool. The tool, uh, the tool is Wi-Fi and cloud connected. It will sync up, it'll just show up on the tool. We also have a USB port if you don't have to be connected and you can, you can drop the uh, file on that way. Uh, if, you don't, if, if you don't happen to create files yourself, if you see something that we've made or somebody else has made, or if you just made something that, that I really want to do, uh, we're, we're also creating something called Shaper Hub. It's effectively mm -hmm. a marketplace where we can upload and download files and share those right. files. 
Right, and then yeah. at one point, then you have the scan of your, your material, your environment, your workbench. You have the vector file, but I mean, the CNC needs to know a lot more than that. It needs to know what bit you're using. So how many variables do you have to input in to get a project started? Right, good question. So it's, it's, if you're familiar with CNC, you kind of have to erase everything you've ever learned. And just uh, from a very beginning level, the whole goal of this thing is to not require expert knowledge to be able to use a tool. You want to, you know, the way that we think about, the way that we think about tools at Shaper is that we enjoy the versatility and the intuition of using a tool. You know, when you pick up a drill, you kind of understand this is what we would do with the drill. We want the same thing applied to this handheld CNC. So everything is actually can be done within the touchscreen interface. Ah. So you can actually come into the interface and uh, you can actually just select, very easy to select, okay, I've got a, a quarter inch cutter, I'm gonna cut to this depth, and you can input that directly to the screen. Right, you're letting the, the system know what cutter you're using, how deep you want it to cut, and then once you have it overlaid, is it really, it's as simple as pushing a button. It's as simple right. as pushing a button. So I push the green button, the bit goes down, I turn on, of course, the router, the bit goes down, and then you just trace? It will see the line, it will give you, your, it's, it's going to auto-correct anything within its, its range of correction. So right. there's, a, there's effectively like a large cursor that you're moving. As long as you're on that line, it will course correct within that range. It will give you guiding directions of which way it wants you to follow the line just to produce the best cut quality. And as long as you're following along uh, close enough, it will do the rest for you. If you happen to go out of range, it will actually retract the cutter to keep to prevent you from making mistakes. So how fast can you cut with this? And can, can the bit move along? I mean, it also depends on how deep you're cutting. Yeah, that's and right. So, the material. So this is something that this is not unique to, to Shaper or to Origin. I mean, we, we're not sort of reinventing the laws of cutting physics here. So we, it's, it's, you can think of it uh, the same way you think of any other kind of like router and chip loading. Uh, those types of feeds and speeds apply. So you actually get, there, there's a good amount of sort of, uh, you know, actual physical or haptic feedback. You can kind of understand if you're, if it feels like you're moving too fast, mm -hmm. uh, it'll give you, you'll feel that, or you'll be exceeding, you know, the range of its circle if it's kind of bogged down, right. and it will retract out. Uh, but other, it's you can actually move surprisingly fast. But like you said, it sort of depends how you're loading it up and what your depth is and what your your cutter load is. And then that range of correction it has, that leeway. Um, how big is that circle, and how did you get to that amount of correction? Yeah, it's, it's about a half inch, and it's, uh, well, you know, one, one of the big aspects of designing the tool, it's kind of a, a balance of all these different elements, but one of the co-founders, Alon Moyer, came up with a, a kind of, you know, really elegant and compact uh, mechanical solution to be able to move and do the course correction in both X and Y. And so, you know, this, this is all sort of packaged all into this, you know, fine, compact mm -hmm. little deal. Uh, it, so I think the real trick there is figuring out like what's what's the the smallest possible range of movement that you can do that's still very meaningful for doing course correction and, and making meaningful results. And it turns out that this spot that we're at is is actually really good. Uh, it's fairly easy. I mean, well, you tell me. It, it, it's we think that it's fairly easy to stay within that range and and you know. And it, even having just the you. the imagery mm -hmm. actually gave me the confidence to trace a line That's right. and, and knowing that it was stable. Uh, same goes with the weight, the, the, the pressure of the, 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 the weight of the machine, the amount of force you put on this, even the ergonomics of these handles are to keep everything stabilized. That's right. Wow. All right. Well, what I'd love to do is do another project because we just did the one awesome. and walk through everything we just talked about to illustrate that. Perfect. And, uh, find another branch. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Cool. All right, Joe, super excited to do this. Step one, get the tape on the material. That's right, Right. just lay down some tape. So tell me about the development of this tape, because like it looks like dominoes. Are these essentially like QR codes? Uh, I mean, technically within, within the CV industry, they're con considered fiducial markers. And uh, it turns out it's not that easy to just, you know, go down to Kinko's and say, can you print, print this sort of random uh, non-repeating pattern of dots and do it at 100% scale and don't make any mistakes doing it. So uh, we actually developed the tape in-house and the process for manufacturing the tape in-house. One of the co-founders, Alan, he actually designed the machine to unwind tape, print tape, 
rewind tape, and that's what we had used for a long time in development. We've now figured out how to commercially manufacture the tape and its scale, and that's what you have right now. So we're and the design the is such that it's narrow, so it doesn't need to be like putting patches of squares all around. That's right. So uh, we're trying to design it just for the most flexibility for whatever you happen to be doing. Kind of the the roll of tape form factor seems to be a, a fairly universal one, and you know it kind of works well if you're working on small work pieces or large work pieces. Now, does it matter if I do something like this? That's fine. All different orientations, different angles. How far apart can they be? You know, kind of the density that you're doing it at now is, is appropriate. Um, the biggest thing is that at any given time that it can see enough of the dominoes, which in right now is, is probably like three to four dominoes at any given time. Three to four is, is what it needs to track. Okay. Correct. And what's the field of view of the camera then to, to get that? To give you an idea, it's kind of looking down in a cone like this. Right, right. Yeah. It's almost like a trapezoid. Yeah, yeah, that's right. An angle. So exactly. I got an arrangement of the markers down. Uh, is this good enough for the scan? It's good enough for the scan. This would uh, this would enable you to kind of cut some stuff in this area. If you wanted, it, if you ended up cutting something out here and you were looking out here, it wouldn't be able to see very well. So, so what I'm gonna uh, do is actually great. let me uh, draw like an X marks the spot right there. Right. Okay. Um, and then let's go through that scanning process. Right. All right, Joe. So I just hit scan here. Hit scan. All right. So uh, the camera there, I immediately see that trapezoid and I recognize the highlights even on the screen, these dominoes I'm seeing. That's right. And I'm just moving it around now and it's drawing a map out. Now what happens if I lift this, the shape or origin up, off the platform? Yeah, you can actually, you can do that. You can actually just oh, the take, in, gets bigger, take in the information. Right. And it's, yeah, it's creating, it's like filling out that's right. The map of the area, as long as I get those tracking markers. That's so cool. You're good. And you're, you're, now I'm good? All right, that's right. Finish with the green button right here. That's right. So Saving. it's basically stitching together all these images. Just It's very similar to how a panoramic photo works. It's mm -hmm. just stitching it together into a, a digital map of the workpiece. So what we ultimately end up with is an augmented view of the workpiece. So this, is, this, in fact, is augmented reality fabrication. So what you mean by that is what I'm seeing now is not uh, a real-time image correct. of here, uh, but what's... It's, it's as if a camera is looking directly down the center of the cutter. Uh, so on the screen right now is what it thinks is down here. I can see the edge of the domino, which is the edge of that specific domino. That's right. And if I move, that's why I made this X here. If I move the cutter above the X, I can actually see the X that's right. on the screen, even though there's no camera Correct. in the router. Very it's cool. just doing that from memory. So uh, the next thing I want to do then is how about a cut on the X? Yeah. And uh, you said I could draw shapes here. There's a built-in library of shapes. Yeah. One of the one of the really exciting things we're working on here, and, and for this, you know, let's we've got to look at the the, right. the markers. So let's we'll kind of orient in this direction. So one of the really exciting things we've been working on is is what we call on-tool CAD creation. It's the ability to actually do do things that you would normally do within CAD, but directly on the tool itself. So you know, forget about your laptop. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you just want to, you know, get stuff done, yeah. right? Cut some holes, cut a rectangle, trace out a shape, you know, mount your drill press, do whatever you're doing. So we've started developing a little library of, of basic shapes. You can see. Right, so I can see I can draw a circle. circle. If right. I want to draw a circle. And so it's just produced a crosshair. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you know, move around and kind of aim at the X marks the spot. I'm going to do now that. Now you just treat this as a, just think about it like a large computer mouse, just like you would be doing in Illustrator or anything else. Hit the green button, that's gonna set it center. You, you, you make sure you, you know. Yep, I'm at my X, I'll hit the green button. Yeah. And then drag it out. Oh wow, so it's right. drawing a circle. So it's drawing a circle, and if you notice over there in the upper right corner, it's actually telling you what the diameter of the circle is. Right. So you're, you know, go ahead and drag out, you know, a, a three inch circle or something. So the very next step here is you could just make sure you set your bit diameter. It's All right. quarter inch that we have in there. Set the cutting depth, I recommend a quarter inch for this. And then once you're good to go, once you put on your eyes and ears, you can go ahead and just turn Let's on the machine it. and start cutting. Cool, let's see how you did. There you go. And there you go, a three inch circle with X marks the spot right in the center. 
Now that CAD creation tool are pretty basic, circles, mm -hmm. squares, uh, but in Illustrator, if I want to do something with anchor points and draw more complex shapes, can I do that as well? Yeah, we've actually developed a what we call pen tool within the tool. So uh, it's it's actually very much what you're thinking of within Illustrator. So it's, it's it just sets anchor points, and you can just click, 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 sort of like mouse clicks, and it can you can complete whatever polygon shape that you want and cut away. So I have a polygon shape in mind. Now I haven't drawn it or given me a guide on the material. It's already stun one scan. And can I add that in and then just rescan it? Yeah, just go ahead and just uh, you know draw it directly, you know, wherever you want to do it right here and then we'll just go ahead and I'm gonna write down the name of our website and then draw our logo around it. Right there. Simple polygon shape. We can we can do one of two things. So we can either, if you orient the machine when you're cutting so that you can see all these markers mm -hmm. right now, you can cut it out as is. I just did kind of a quick test to see if I'm going to run out of markers. If you really want to orient the machine this way, if you add some more tape here before we do the scan, you'll sort of give yourself some added insurance. Ah, so not only can I add uh, this drawing back into the map for the, the augmented reality portion, I can add more tape and expand my material. Sure. Right. Yeah. So let's do it simple, keep it simple, All look right. this way. Yeah, you'll just have to, in. One, once you do this, kind of aim it in this direction. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and do a rescan? You really only have to scan this area now. All right, so I click exit and I click scan and it sees the markers again. Yep. And I'm just gonna kind of you know what? We scan all the way up, over, all the, all the way markers up. that you can see. There you go. All right. And you're done. And then just push finish. Finish. It's saving. Yep. Now, this computation is all going to happen in the machine in the final version? Correct. How much computation is that? Is, is this kind of computer vision very compute heavy? Uh, not as heavy as you might think. In fact, uh, one of the co-founders, Alec, he actually, Alec Rivers, he actually has at one t point in time during development, actually had it running on a Raspberry Pi. Oh, wow. It's not what we're shipping with, but it, but it is possible. Okay, so uh, I see now what I've drawn. It is, yep, that T is on there. Right. Uh, and now I'm in the pen tool, and so you're just creating anchors. So I just press the green button to create yeah, a point. That's right. All right, so point there. Yep. Draw, move here, point there. there. You go. Wow. And can you do curves this way as well? Not yet, but that's uh, coming soon. So right now, if I want to do something more curved, like just a lot of a lot of points, just add more points, and hit my origin. There you go. Click. Boom. And that's the shape. You created your shape. Whoa. We also have the ability to to actually within here without changing the diameter of the bit. So you can just trust that that's the diameter. You can actually dial in offsets. Right. It's almost like adding a stroke to the outside <laughs> yeah, of the vector. Yeah, exactly. So well, you're basically just offsetting the path of where you want to cut. So you can either bit. go inside or outside of what you're doing. Okay. That is so Cool. <laughs> we think so. Thank you. Wow. You're working at a measured pace, but like, what is the scope for this? Could you pair multiple versions of this together and have people working on one project at once? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've already gone through how you're sort of creating this 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 digital map of your mm -hmm. work piece. You can actually link that to that map to other machines. So we've actually done projects like we've done a, a large scale chair. Uh, on the other side of the shop where we had one of our shapers on one end of a four by eight sheet of plywood, one at the other, we sort of met in the middle and you know, all working off the same file. You can actually see the same cut history on both machines. Also. Oh, so there's yeah. that shared information between them, that Correct. cut history. How yeah. big of an area can you actually map if you wanted to? Can you do a big you know, four by eight sheet of ply? Absolutely, this workbench here, which is a, a Ron Polk inspired workbench. Uh, we actually did this entire thing with Shaper. Uh, so this, this starts life as a four by eight sheet of plywood and we mm -hmm. cut that down. 
Um, really, you're only limited by where you can put tape. So, um, as we mentioned before, you can continue to add tape if you if you're kind of working in one particular area and you want to move into another area, you can augment your, your work piece that way. And this also looks like a standard off-the-shelf router. What's, I mean, what's the status of this product and you know, how much what you get out of the box, what we need to bring in when this eventually goes on sale? Right, so this is still a pre-production prototype. Um, these have been kind of our workhorses, workhorse uh, beta testing units for about the past year. Um, this is an off-the-shelf trim router but uh, the, the product that we'll be uh, pre-selling at the end of the summer is gonna be uh, all-inclusive. So when you open up the box, it's gonna have its own router. It's going to come with a, a selection of our favorite cutters, the ones that we've been using today. Uh, and it's, it's gonna be just you know, ready to go. You should be able to kind of pull it out and, and get to work. I'm really excited, and then the tape as well. You have it oh, readily available? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. of course. Right. Ships with tape and Ships readily available. Tape. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for sharing yeah. with me the, the shape of origin. Thanks for coming by and checking it out. It's addictive. <laughs> like, I just want to start engraving everything now. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we think it, it's it's definitely fun and addictive, and it's it, you know it's just you're not great. too far away from our office. So we're gonna come back and <laughs> do some more projects. Take advantage of this while please you guys are do, still. Please do. Please do. What a beta test for you. Now you have you have shop access. That's fine. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tom. So.